its illustrious history. In 17 years to the day since final played Scottish opposition in the shape of Aberdeen, and the Scottish side triumphed that day by two goals to one, goals from Willie Faulkner and Joe Miller, and how those Hearts fans who've come in the numbers here to Rotterdam would appreciate a night like that. There you see the final side, just one change from the side from the weekend, they beat Rhoda. Zyverlon is the surprise inclusion ahead of Chung Song, the Korean international. He comes in at right back for his first ever European match, and that has raised some eyebrows around the media of Feyenoord. Hearts have to make some changes as well. We already know there is no Mark de Vries, but there's no Phil Stamp either, and that's certainly a blow. From the weekend, Stamp Stewart, and we are out. In come McFarlane, Hamill, and McKenna. And Derek White alongside me, it's a big night for Hearts, it's a big night for Kevin McKenna. He's not played a lot this season, Kevin McKenna, but in his 100th start for Hearts, he's been asked to play a big role. Yeah, very much so, and I think it's a difficult job for him tonight up there on his own, um, and it's worked well in the past for Craig Levine's side. Also a huge blow to him tonight, they've lost uh, Mark De Vries and also Philip Stamp, two main players on the side. I feel Stamp is a, a, big, a big big miss for them tonight. But hopefully they'll be out the world, as I know, Craig Levine's side will be organised, and uh, you know, it'll be competitive as ever. It'll be a really extremely difficult match for tonight. So the fans, plenty of them, have come in the numbers. Been a little bit of trouble in Rotterdam throughout the afternoon, but the Hearts fans have arrived here safely as we see our referee. And then Ruud Hillett, who was on sparkling form at the press conference yesterday, said all the right things. Feyenoord are the team of his heart. And this is where he wants to be as he tries to Find success again for Feyenoord, one of the top three clubs, obviously, in Holland. But their last league title came in 1999. Stephen Presley, too, in the press conference, was on good form. He's genuinely excited about playing here this evening. And he's up against Coit, Dirk Coit, the Dutch international. And he's a young man with a very bright future. Yeah, very much so. This guy, Dirk, I'm really looking forward to seeing him and Kalou up front together. Paul, I think he's uh, two exciting young players. I mean, Dirk Coit's got 20 goals in 34 league games last season for Feyenoord. Uh, and he's got 51 goals in 160 games I'm reading here in front of me and he's a, a top player, uh, a Dutch international of course, the team's full of Dutch internationals and in various other countries and they, they're a real quality side, a young side as well I must add Seven internationalists in the starting lineup. up is Craig Gordon, now he's superb in Bordeaux he'll have to be even better than that tonight you suspect to keep out Messrs, Kalou and Coit so seven internationals in the Feyenoord side, three Dutchmen South Korean, Japan, Belgium, Tunisia, all represented in the squad. Hungary, the goalkeeper, and Tommy Pokes and the referee. You may recognise him. He refereed Scotland against Estonia earlier in the year. Presley, Webster, and Gordon all played in that match. Saidi, the central defender, plays a long one forward now for Robbie Nielsen. Took it awkwardly. Kalu picks up. Completely fine or go on the attack. That's nicely back to Kalu. Kalu goes past his man. Early claim for a free kick. Then the early shot comes in. 24 seconds on the watch and already was, we knew it's been confirmed. They're dangerous. Yeah, they're very positive. That's a great little move here. Um, great tackle. Good, that's a good early one for Craig Gordon. Got a hold of the ball there, set him down. And you see with the formation set up right away, Hearts are playing just with a big guy, uh, McKenna up front on his own. Uh, five across the middle of the park there, just to maybe try and stifle it a wee bit. But they've uh, got Koita and uh, uh, Kalu up front, and, and they've got Hoor on the far side as well, on the left side, being very positive and trying to get forward there. So Hearts' chances will be at a premium, you suspect, but they will try and come forward. Good Levine, deep thinker, and he's up against Ruud Hillett, first quarter national to win the FA Cup as a manager. An achievement he's very proud of. And Hearts will have the throw through Robbie Nielsen. Nielsen with a throw into the box. Saidi was there, comes down for Hearts, there's an early chance, the goalkeeper comes, Hearts, well it's Hart there for Hearts, so Feyenoord do bring the ball away, comes past Hartley, out to Castellan on the near side, puts the little ball forward, Presley with a good challenge, it's important for Presley to try and get that early challenge, let the forward know that he's there, and Farnham plays the ball back to Andy Webster, Craig Levine said he's very impressed with the forwards, the midfield, but the back four could be their weak point if they have one. Yeah, well, they're obviously under pressure there from the front from Robbie Nielsen. That's a dangerous weapon for Hearts to get the ball into the box. Physically, they're a bigger side, I think, with the both teams here. Uh, they're a bigger side than uh, Feyenoord Hearts, and, you know, they have to use that to their advantage if they can. Here comes Kalou. He's got pace. He runs at Presley. 
stands up the Hearts captain comes in field to who the Belgian Watch the ball back nicely done he comes out to the near side Romeo Castellan and Romeo goes past Alan Mabry and Alan Mabry pops him to the turf and Hearts will have a free kick to defend yeah, I think it was definitely a free kick there. It's just a lot of skill, the, 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 uh, the right hand side there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a full, definitely. So, Castellan, who's been in the Dutch squad of late, from the Den Haag player. And Hearts will have to defend. Ball comes in, Gordon comes for it, takes it. Good early catch, good decisive goalkeeping. Yeah, Man of the match this evening. The prize is a digital radio. You can give us a call 09011. Double one oh eight six one. Listen to some fantastic sports coverage on Radio Scotland in wonderful digital quality. Good early take from Craig Gordon. Yeah, I think I'll do his confidence a little bit as his earlier save did as well. It's just interesting the corner kicks there, uh, Paul. The hearts that have watched them in the last few seasons as well. They get everybody back and I feel uh, this is I'm gonna tell Craig Levine how to do his job in anyway, but I feel this if you if you get a clearance you have to summon up the part to get a hold and retain possession. And they don't register if they do clear it, you know, uh, there's no one there to hit. They're certainly very comfortable on the ball, Feyenoord. One of six Dutch teams still involved in European competition. As McFarlane tries to put some pressure. Saidi, the Tunisian, comes out to the near side. Let's me try and get some early pressure on Giazani Zuberlin in his European debut. Slow ball out wide, Hamill. Sees it go past him. There has to come back. How well the Dutch internationalist plays it to his central defensive partner. Feyenoord, very deliberate in their build-up. Here comes Coit. Coit trying to split for Castellan. and Mabry read the danger the last time. Shepherded it away. Saw the danger last time and gave away the free kick. That time the defending was better. Yeah, unfortunately a little slip there, but he managed to clear it by Webster then. Cameron in field to Ono. Ono plays a tempting ball in. And again, comfortable from the Hearts goalkeeper. Again, Paul, you're looking at looking at the formation of the fine odd side here. They're very much at times, you know, they've got great width on their side. We're here on one side and uh, Romo Castellan on, on this side here. And uh, they, they make great use of the pitch and the width of it. And at times, they're, they're playing almost four up front and the movement's fantastic. And here they come again, showing that movement. Castellan, two Hearts players tracking back. It's because normally the Australian Mayberry comes across. Ball knocked out of play. I mean, it's a perfect playing surface. We had a chance to look at it earlier. It's a beautiful place to play football. Like magnificent. This what a setting for a for a football match. Uh, the atmosphere is great when you come out as well, and uh, you know to use it for cup finals and, and internationals as well. It's a fantastic set. Ball gets played forward. And here come Hearts from the midfield. Taken forward by Hamill. Again, I can't get there. Supporting is Paul Hartley, trying to be brave against Saidi. Kareem Saidi picked up, played the ball out wide. Feyenoord again, just trying to build slowly, using that width. Stepping in there was McFarlane. Ball gets knocked back, nicely done. Five and a half minutes gone. We're scoring here in the Bakook Stadium. Stephen Presley, long ball forward, but again, Hearts don't link up the midfield. Castellan. Canister comes back to help, but he's dropped off Ono. Ono with the ball in the box, the flag goes up. And that's a relief for all concern. But Hearts stepping up very quickly. Yeah, they obviously organised that and worked that in training, that one. Um, it's, it's an excellent line there. Yeah, he's definitely offside. It's an excellent line, marshalled well by, again, by Stephen Presley. He's excellent at that, getting the boys out to come out the edge of the box. It's, it's an offside trap in a way, but it gives the keeper a wee opportunity well, uh, as well. A bit of room to come and take the ball at times. But you can see just again, that's what I love about the Dutch football, the movement they've got and they're interchanging positions all the time and it's extremely difficult to mark against that. Well, Ruud Hulet was talking about the type of football he wanted to play. He expects good football from his side, he says don't talk about sexy football anymore, he just wants good passing. And that's what he's been getting from his side. The second in the Dutch league, he opened the campaign 6-1 and 4-0. barely drawn breath since continued to second, although he did lose 3-0 to Utrecht here in the worst match of the season. And Hearts will get to try and put some pressure on and see if they can ask a few questions 
Well, as you mentioned, it is a relatively inexperienced side in terms of age, although they are packed with internationals. That's right, they're young players, but they've got a lot of new players as well, so maybe time to, uh, you know, time for them to settle in as well. But quality players they've brought, haven't they? And uh, you know, which I joy to watch at times. So Ono plays the ball wide. Comes back across to Ono, who got the goal in the last round when they played against Odd in Norway. A 1 0 win. And then finished off the tie with a 4 1 victory here. And 10 of the 11 who start started that night. Ono flicks the ball on. Castellan, danger here for Hearts. The fans rise just below us. Ball back to Ono. Wants to get it on the right foot again. Castellan weighs up the cross. Gordon has to stay that time. Never comes in, and Craig Gordon comes to take. He's got good height from Presley and Webster, and also coming in from the back from the right side was Nielsen. Yeah, that, that was good, good player. Defensively, they have got height and, and strength there, Hearts as well. But I'd like to use it in a positive sense when they're going forward as well, when they've set pieces and they're a threat, as we've seen earlier on, from the, the long throw. But whether we got up the park much in, in this game uh, is debatable as well. It's a tough night for Kevin McKenna. Being asked to patrol the front line, Kevin McKenna. And this is his first start of the season. Kalu. Runs out of play. Top goal scorer in the Dutch league so far. Ten goals overall, nine in the league. A yeah, very exciting player as well, yeah. Paul's 19 years, of, 19 years old, you know. And We'll all remember his brother, who's a fantastic player for him as well. Uh, the final, I think he's up there now, his brother. That's uh, right, his brother basically said to Rude Hula, I'm leaving, but hey, they yeah, want a replacement. Yeah. Yeah, I think, it. I'm sure, as Rude uh, Hula said in his press conference yesterday, he'd love to have both of them on the same side, and uh, that'd be very exciting. Hearts had a recommendation from a brother once, unfortunately, it was Hussef Muzmik's brother. <laughs> it's a blast from the past, Hussef Muzmik, who scored a winning goal against Tibbs, and I think that was the only thing he did in a Maroon jersey. Nine minutes gone. No goals. We've seen plenty of passing from Feyenoord. Craig Levine been relatively happy there. I think so. I think it's uh, they've you know, had a shot early on. Um, Craig Gordon's dealt with everything. He's come into the box in the air. Um, and I think it would very much this where the game will be like this. They're well organised. Um, Peter Houston and, and Craig have been well organised. But we've just got to watch at times the movement and the runs from the middle of the park from the, the Feyenoord players have to be matched because uh, they're, they're very good at springing forward. That's the land. Just to have the touchline. He's not afraid to take on both Hearts players. And Mabry goes in. He's not at all pleased with Anders Hermansen, the near side assistant referee, but the throw goes against Alan Mabry. Strong play by Kalou. Bosch Hearts really been in the game, plays the ball out wide. That's a good tackle from Robbie Nielsen. That's a good welcome to the game to Bruno Basto. And Robbie Nielsen is not going to hold back. He's played against them before. Basto, a new signing from Bordeaux, played against Hearts last year. Yeah, that's a magnificent tackle, wasn't it? Just time and right. Uh, Scottish punters like one of them, don't they? Uh, at times they, they cheer for a tackle like that. They're a bit of skill. They'd rather have somebody a lunging tackle. That was a great tackle. Well timed. Robbie Nielsen goes in. And a little less well timed on that occasion. And he'll drop back. He was man of the match against Bordeaux, if memory serves me correctly. The terrific night, Robbie Nielsen. Just joining us, Hearts are without Mark de Vries for the first time in a European tie under Craig Levine. Kevin McKenna playing up front, but Hearts have to worry about the defensive side of the organisation. Ball gets played across, McKenna back defending, breaks, so that's a good charge down by Kisnorval. Paul Hartley goes in, but again, Hearts have nobody up the field. So Fano can ping the ball back in. Presley, Hoyt, will he leave it? Yes, he will. And that's the danger you spoke about. If they don't leave somebody up, the second ball is always going to find them. Yeah, that's what they've, they've done it again there. Um, I know they've done that the last few seasons under Craig, and uh, I just feel there's no target to hit there. Short corner, Hartson in the second man out. McFarlane comes out, they're both sold the dummy. The measure cross should have been better than it was. Hartson out. And hammering out. Webster, oh, he wasn't sure. There's a chance. That came from Patrick Bauer. The Dutch internationalist, and it took a deflection on the way to find out of the second corner of the match. Yeah, it was an excellent block there, just caught under Webster's feet, and uh, Big Elvis just throwing himself in front of it. And it had an earlier one with Kasnobo as well. You're going to have that tonight 
if you're going to get a result in a clean sheet away from home especially, you've got to throw yourself in front of things, and that was excellent defending. So again, the angle of the corner's changed. He blocked it up. Oh, no. That's the player's name, not the worry in the voice. He's coming forward. Again, they knock it forward quickly. They try and get it out wide. And again, Feyenoord will come. Yeah, it's a bit of sustained pressure now, isn't it? Um, it's been a wee while since Hearts have been up the pitch. But I say, that's not, not surprising. They've actually done it now. They've got uh, McKenna pushed up front for the target now. It's a wise move by Craig Levine as Feyenoord with another throw. Quite just as a little look over to the Hearts fans. If so, what are you complaining about? I'm back it off them. And the Hearts fans, well, they were singing before the game. They've not had too much to share about so far. Their side on the defensive. Knocks the ball back. Sanji Ono. Borsha again, there's space on the flank. No pass though. Plays it across, little head flick on. And that time it'll be a goal kick. And the Hearts fans cheer. And a chance to relieve some of the pressure. Because it was a good spell from final. Yeah, they've been, they've been putting Hearts under pressure, but nothing too major, I don't think, at times. Uh, there's a man there, Ruth Hill, who's excellent in his press conference yesterday, wasn't he? Just a uh, one experience to see the, the guy in action. Uh, likes a wee bit of confidence, of course, but he uh, does, he does. Um, you can be like that, I think, if you're the World Player of the Year, the European Player of the Year at one time. So, did you have a word with him? Well, I that, yeah. more outgoing. No, I just, I just, I was a bit embarrassed when you will get his autograph. Paul, that was all the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's here beside me on my team sheet. That's not often you get to speak to the chap who's lifted the European of Championship, course. etc. Yeah. Nice guy, but we hope on this occasion nice guys don't win. His hearts hold on again, being pinned back. Kalut sees the ball go past him. Saidi comes across. A ripple of applause as the ball comes out to Castellan. Castellan now forward. Maybe with a good challenge. Hartley picks up. Oh, Hartley nowhere to go. Pitch was being heavily watered before the game, and Hartley does well. Play the ball on. Hamill with a pass. McAllister. Well, that looked out to me. And the ball allowed to play on. McAllister just looked a little bit slow to take that. No, I think the, the weight of the pass was wrong from uh, from Hamill in the first place. I think it was uh, should be played into Jimmy's pass so he could take a touch to cross. And uh, well, we thought it was out initially, but uh, Jimmy had a poor cross into the box anyway after it. Point hassled out of the ball. McFarlane passes to the near side. Forward by Mabry, into McKenna. That really is a tough roll up there, especially for somebody who's coming back off injury. Yeah, very much. If you're not if you're not played for so long, to go and play in a, a roll up there on your own, um, try to close down and, and hold the ball up, it's an extremely difficult task. Um, and especially trying to play smart the because he's he, again, i will say he's a huge loss uh, tonight. For him. Fifteen minutes gone in the Coupe Stadium, nil nil. That's an inviting one for Hearts to try and take. McAllister from Maybury. Thank you, Hearts players wanting the ball. There's a positive sign. This is Julian Kisnorbo. Plays it across. Ball forward. Not particularly a good one. And again through to Kisnorbo. Because Norbo seems to be the sitting midfield player. I wondered if McFarlane would play that role. Yeah, as because Norbo was just sitting in front of the back boys there, protecting, and uh, obviously not the long to McKenna um, with Hartley and, and Jim McAllister trying to support. Here comes Coit, plays the ball in. Webster knocks it on. Alan Maybury plays it off the corner flag. Good play, worth the effort. Yeah, Dirk, Dirk Co Coit looks the part, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, just his size, his build. He's got a great centre of balance there, and uh, nice touch on the ball. And, also a top player. Seven goals for his club scored against Roda in the weekend, a 2-0 win. And there was a little flash off the ball there. And Paul Hartley, who's had two yellow cards in this competition, if he receives a third, he'll be suspended for the next match. Yeah. By number five. It's Bill Sharp. Comes back out again. Struggling to get the ball away, McAllister has to slide in, it'll touch back. And Mabry doesn't get the height on it either, Hearts contributing to their own problems. As Cyberlund plays the ball back. 
Norgal still goes on the overlap. It's missed though. And this gives Norgal to step forward. Ambitious ball, and it was read all the way as Ireland comes forward. There's an awful lot of misplaced passes going on. We expect a, a bit more quality from there in the final third, wouldn't we? Yeah. Hearts low ball to McKenna that time, but again, the Canadian can't link up. Presley high. Sandwich there on the Canadian. Bernard again have it. Goes out of play on the far side. Decent crowd inside the Indicoot. Holds 51,000. There was 27,000 tickets sold. It certainly looks like 40,000 plus inside the ground tonight. I think there's an away side Paul as well to keep the, the fans quiet at the moment, and that's a good sign. Uh, the longer you can do that, frustrate them. And maybe the, fan, the, the final fans are starting to play players back a wee bit, want them to go forward and uh, you know, get, get goals. But I have to say they're a wee bit more patient in Holland than they are in Scotland in terms of the ball getting played along the back. And Scotland are going to get forward quickly. Uh, but they're keeping quiet at the moment, which is good. Ball gets played back to Gavar Babos. Behind him is the fanatical final fans. Craig Gordon has that joy to look forward to in the second half. in terms of action so far. It's fine hard look to build. Chris Castellan again having a little go at Mabry. Alistair's back to help him. The ball forward for Coit. Again, well timed by Andy Webster. Kevin McKenna is complaining about the service. Not very much. So he's got to drop it into his chest or into his feet or into his thigh there because the ball up there like that's no use to him. Um, it's very difficult because the service has got to be better. Even if he wins it, Derek, he's not going to flick it to anybody. No, he's got to hold it in, so up in that area, up there, it's, nice, it's no use to him at all. It's, it's good at the moment, the way that, uh, obviously, um, Castellan's getting a, they're using their width well. They get the ball out to 28 Castellan quite a lot. I like the way that Mabry and McAllister are doubling up, make it very difficult for him. Crowd in his area, and he, he's not getting any joy at the moment. On to Ono. Comes back to him. Good sliding challenge from Presley. No, has the ball again. Shot comes in, and Craig Gordon will be happy to see them pop to his goal. No, that was, that was a respect to Ono, you know, guy who's played, uh, played in all the World Cup games for Japan uh, in, in 2002 there. So another quality player, you expect him to maybe hit for the target for there, but that should be happy with that, as they can keep doing that all night. So Craig Gordon, with the Hearts goal, it's considerably warmer than where he was last week, Kishinev. You know. Scotland's one all draw with Moldova. And the ball gets played out. Kevin McKenna and the Hearts away kit and they share the same colours of the away kit as Feyenoord. Power plays it forward, there's a breakthrough, there's danger here, Craig Gordon goes wide, the clearance off the line was important. Boschard got free, it was a terrific run, but Hearts goal stays intact after 20 minutes. Yeah, very fortunate here, um, good defending, but Nielsen just a wee trip there, Big Webster on the line, thankfully. Um, that was a real danger, that was a real opportunity for Feyenoord there, and Hearts are very fortunate there. I was about to say they're very slow in their play forward, and then they just move it forward so quickly as the ball comes across. Hearts have to defend that McKenna, it was a poor header. There was a clear push in the box, not spotted by the referee, and it comes out wide, although not quite the ball it was anticipated. Boshart, who may well have opened the scoring, plays it wide. Cross comes in on the near side, how oh, he hooks it across, danger here, Hearts want offside! It's not been given! And it's Dirk Goit who gets his eighth goal of the season and Hearts are behind. After 21 minutes, it's Feyenoord 1, Hearts 0. Yeah, I just thought when they cleared the danger initially there, because uh, it's offside. Um, yeah, definitely offside for the cross. Look, Dirk Goit gets ahead on the back stick, but... The, it's an offside position, and he's, surely he's in the field of a play there. He's offside by a mile. He's offside by an absolute mile. But it's been given. Well, Craig Gordon just looking behind him. Well, you need a touch of luck when you go away from home, playing a side that are supposedly better than you, but Andrews Hermanson, I don't think it's helped Hart's cause. Not at all. I thought it was a definite offside. The problem is now, how do Hearts change it now? Do they, do they go and you know, do they put another one up front with McKenna? Or do they remain the same and be patient and try and keep the, the score down? How, how do they approach this one? It's a, a question for Craig Levine on his side now. It's 
disappointing to lose a goal, to lose one in that fashion. It makes it all the harder to take for the Hearts fans and the Hearts players. It's because Norbo sees the ball come across. I mean, credit to the striker, it was a decent header. He put it across the goalkeeper. He did everything that he was supposed to do, but he had a lot of space to do it. Yeah, it, was a, it was a great finish from the header, but was, again, most of the was an offside, and that's a cruel deal. And away from home, when you try to keep things tight and you don't get a decision, well, that, that's incredible. Mavery plays the ball back. That's now going to be hard for Hearts here in Rotterdam. Webster forward. Again, can't pick up McKenna. I wonder if the short ball through the midfield would be the better option. As Kalu picks up, plays it out wide. Leonard, like. Yeah, the distribution from the back yeah. is going to be better. Better service to the front guys from Webster, uh, especially there and uh, Nielsen earlier on. You have to get the, the proper service on the front guys if they're going to get any kind of attacks going in this game. Look like they might just try and kill the game off very quickly with a good spell here. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm just looking, you were saying earlier, but it's amazing how finally you think, oh, they'll just keep possession, keep possession, get the final third, they're explosive, aren't they? And they've got all the tricks and the pace, and uh, just seem to come to life, and that's the, a lot of you know, teams seem to do that. Um, but it's too really difficult for Hearts to get back in at this one. Here's into McFarlane, McKenna going through, and there's some work for Ivor Babos, he's not had too much to do, the Hungarian. Paula plays it forward. And gets it back from a Utrecht player. He's got the little kid McKenna can do to put pressure on. Here's Saidi. Plays it forward. And the fans are extremely patient, aren't they, with the, the way they're keeping the ball. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got a few rumbles in Scotland if that was happening at the moment. Yeah, we'll do a fan spot. We'll get the Barrick Thistle fans out here to watch Fire Nord. I think even looking at Hearts, I'm looking at they haven't changed yet at all that they're, they're set up. They still went the 4-5-1 um, and came out front. And this is when they have to make things count. It's scraps like this, Hearts have got to take. McAllister plays the ball in, but only McKenna was up. And despite the fact that McAllister was going down the left-hand side, there was very little support coming with. Yeah, that, that's a, maybe a fear of trying to get, you know, because they're very good in the counter-attack, but they have, if they're going to try and get back into the match, they've got to get more bodies pulling into the box. So two balls on the pitch. And it's nonchalantly flicked away by Ono. Carlin Maybrick. It's the ball back. John McAllister. Now the angle ball in. As a take for the goalkeeper. And he'll go route one very early looking for Kalu. Presley will just knock that back onto his goalkeeper. And it's not like there's been you know, chance after chance. I mean, fan out of a lot of the possession, Derek, but they've not really pressurised too much, but they've proved through Boshart coming forward and then through the goal that they can hit hearts, and that's what they've got to be wary of. And I'm just wondering if that's why Chris Norbert will just continue to sit. Yeah, I think I don't think that will change the whole evening. I think he'll sit in front and try and protect because a very good counter-attack on the break and a danger, a direct kick from the goalkeeper there uh, with the pace of up front. You've got to be very careful. But a cool head from Stephen Presley to mop that one up. Sagalin into Castellan. Again defended by the tag team of Mabry McAllister. Howler knows there's a runner outside him. Again, Mabry tries to make life hard for Castellan. It's a decent ball forward though. Point holds it well. So it's almost two on one the whole time just to try and deny the space. Yeah, they've got to double up uh, players of that quality. But again, you look through the side, seven out of last, as you say, and uh, you know, one nil down to them. I don't think it's, uh, it's not the start that we'd like, but uh, look, Craig's side looking well organised at the moment. Oh no, plays it forward. Nielsen tries to stay with his man, comes back to Ono. Oh He's shot from distance once, he tries it again. Much closer that time. He certainly hit with power. Yeah, it was good play, just got a, a good touch out from his left foot there. And a decent strike, uh, didn't get quite over it as the way as we'd like. The technique's excellent, um, plenty of pace on it, and uh, you would expect him again, we'd expect a guy like him with his ability uh, to hit target from him. 12 league goals in 83 league matches for the Rotterdam club. Senior club in Rotterdam, if you like, there's also Excelsior and Sparta. This is the big ticket in Rotterdam. Ball 
forward. 27 minutes gone, Hearts trailing by 1-0. They'll feel hard done by with a goal from Coit. The header after 21 minutes. Hearts coming forward, good link play. Nielsen tries to keep the ball, does so. It's got Hartley forward. Hartley goes after it, it's almost going to take a touch. He comes for it, and the corner kick is awarded. Good play for yeah, Hartley. Well done, that's more like it. Chasing a lost cause. Uh, I'll get the, you see the Hearts fans getting up there. Uh, get them a bit something to shout about as well, that's great. Goalkeeper just comes to the very edge of his box. Good touch. So Hearts with the first corner of the match. Plenty of bodies forward. Let's try and get something on target. The goalkeeper punches. Farland's a tough job in his hands. He did well. He did Alan Maybury Had to go backwards, which is the disappointment. Back foot from Craig Gordon. Webster has stayed forward. McAllister slips out loud. Quite time to bring the ball. I thought he could have brought it under control. Zyverlin. Shoved away by Ono. That's a lovely touch, but it was read by Mabry. And the date by McAllister that time. Yeah, Hearts are winning back this possession in the middle of the park. As I said earlier, they've got to get better distribution there because it's so frustrating uh, when we're giving the ball away uh, so often like that. Well, Hearts have just won seven times in 30 away matches. And in recent years, the away wins have come in places like Iceland and Estonia. So nobody doubts the hard work is what a mistake that was. Well, that was a good lesson on how to make the simple very difficult. Yeah, direct pass from the back over the top and. Uh, you know, be a bit of confusion as Craig Levine had said earlier on, they felt it was a weakness in the back boys. And they seem to have proved right there. The only exception to Hearts, recent rule, Bordeaux, the fine win they had over there. The goal through Mark De Vries. Ball comes in. Point the stick, gets the header away. Paul Hartley goes after it. Decent play by Hartley, just made sure Ono wasn't going to go past him. Started well, Zyberlin looked comfortable in the yeah. right back position. Very much so, he's only 17 years old. What a, a game to step into. Um, but they said, speaking to one of the final officials at the side before the game, he was saying they've got high hopes for the boy um, coming through. And he just hasn't looked out of place tonight at all. It's fine, hard one, a free kick. A little tug looked like Webster. And Kalu, who just dust himself down, get back up. That's a bit of free kick to defend. Yeah, very strong, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think he had a choice in the matter there, Webster, I think he had to pull him down. Um, and as, as a case, he's received a booking for it as well. So Andy Webster goes in the book, that's his first booking of the competition. It's Paul Hartley, that's the worry, he's got two yellow cards. His hearts, next match against Schalke at Murrayfield. Schalke at home to Baal this evening. Up to date with that match. Pique comes in, Wall does its job, and then McFarlane steps forward, because Norville, he looked up to see who was available to hold on. McFarlane's first touch wasn't great, but Hearts hold on to the ball. 31 minutes gone, Hearts being penned in here, Nielsen tries to take on Coit, and Hearts do get the free kick. Yeah, I think it was, Paul, I think, you know, it was a free kick there, and... Uh, Takes the pressure off for a couple of minutes and uh, lets them get reorganised, get their shape again, and get a wee breather, to be honest, because uh, they've been under pressure. If you want to try and guess who the man of the match is going to be and win a digital radio, if you can agree with Derek White, at the end of the match, call us on 09 011 110 861. The man of the match. Kenneth. Trying to flick the ball on. Hearts have it through Hamill on the right side. Has to hold up Hamill. Worked free well, that's an interesting cross, just too close to the goalkeeper, but the encouraging sign is he got free, got the ball in the box. Yeah, that's better, because obviously you've, got, you've seen Jimmy McAllister and Hartley bursting into the box with McKenna. Uh, you know, it was a decent delivery, but uh, still again got a wee bit better. Point. And short for the ball. Sharp. Easily mops up. The field player, he tends to sit. And Hart's conceding ground. 
Power. Patrick Power comes forward again. Sharks just came in on the far side. Bruno Buster makes himself available. That's a poor ball though. Hearts have it. Good play by McKenna that time. That's what he's got to do. Hold up from the midfield players into play. Hamilton wanted too long. Palou to Castellan. This is where fine order quick. Palou's making a good run. Castellan gets away from Kisnorby. Wants to go in the box himself. Plenty of hearts players there though. Again, very quick to move into the danger zone. Yeah, and they crowded out well. Um, it was good play. Get around the bottom, put them under pressure. And the surprise is the crowd. Not really behind them as much as I thought. And this must be relatively happy. Yeah, I think that they're, that they're comfortable at the moment. The hearts aren't really causing a threat. Having said that, I think they'd be you know, we're fairly happy away from home one now, but that obviously they would, they would like to I don't think there's a goal anyway, but I think they're disappointed by that. His organisation his team's pretty good at the moment. Away from home, I think you just keep them disciplined and try and get up, uh, you know, maybe later on in the game and try and get forward and get a goal. Another wild swipe from the final defence. Hearts do need to try and apply a bit more pressure in this one-off match. That's the format for the UEFA Cup. Four matches, two home, two away. Five teams in the group. Three go through. There's a lovely touch, gets played through. Quite here goes it on Craig Gordon! It could have been 2-0. And thankfully for Hearts, it's not. Quite coming through. Pulled it across. The credit to the goalkeeper. Trying to hold his angle, but that flick was devastating. Oh, great little flick into his path. Incredible, he just came right across it. Uh, Try to put it in the far side of the net there. Even good guys, good players like him can uh, miss chances like that, you know, just shows he's human. What a flick by Kalu though. I mean, great awareness, wasn't it? Just to, to yeah. slide him in there and that we touch on the ball. I think that throws at least two hearts, players. You couldn't blame them for yep, it. They got away with it. So Nielsen plays the ball forward. Again, it's long. Bambos having a fairly easy evening so far. Just over 10 minutes to half time. Hearts trailing by 1 to 0. 21st minute goal by Coit. Arguably, it should have been 2. Castellan. Moves the ball back. Sunderland. Oh no. Driving forward, power. Plays it in. Oh, the offside flag goes up. He does have a flag with him, Derek. Extremely late as well, again. And you see the uh, the noise of the, the Hearts fans there, displeasure, because it, it was very late with the flag going up. Oh, it was close, too. Yeah. Now, Craig, we'll, I'm wondering about, will Craig Levine will you know, be thinking about the moment, will he be thinking, should I go 4 4 2 and match up against them, or should I stay the way I am just now, just with, with McKenna up front of his own, the 4 5 1? And I think it would be more inclined just to stick the way it is at the moment. With respect to Hearts uh, playing against a quality side like this, I think they've matched up 4 4 2 against them, Paul. I think they have got better players, and uh, I think he knows that. So, what do you do, Danny? Do you just leave it to what the last 15 If it stays the same, last 15 minutes? Uh, I think so, without being kamikaze or crazy. I think you can maybe, uh, you know, afford to let Sunday go, go uh, further forward, maybe Hartley or McAllister getting further forward at, at times later on in the match. But at the moment, at 1 0, they'll still get a wee opportunity here or there. I'm sure they will, Hearts, um, especially from set pieces where they're very dangerous, you know, throw ins, corners, and stuff. Uh, hopefully, they can get in that way uh, and get a go for that, that, that area of the pitch. Great kick, simple push by the youngster, part of the A squad. Eugenie Zyberlin. Just pushes McAllister to the deck. Kenny again, trying to get a position to bring the ball on his chest rather than his head. Not breaking Hart's way. Nielsen goes in, puts pressure on. That's good play again, Robbie Nielsen. He came up to support McFarlane, tried to put pressure on, trying to make something happen. Yeah, he's, he's the decent half. Um, for good tackles uh, and try to get forward as much as he can. Um, but Craig again will try to try to be rigid at the back and, and try not to get put forward too often because we're always wary of them in the counter attack. Bomb ball into the box, thinking for McKenna. Could break for McAllister, brings it down. He wants some help, turns it round, gets the touch. Hamill slides it out wide. McKenna's offside. The Hearts fans see the flag very quickly, so they don't celebrate. But Kevin McKenna doesn't agree. But encouraging again from Hearts. There you go, they can get in um, initially. That's incredible. Well, it's Paul Hartley. Uh, Paul Hartley standing off position, but he's not interfering with play. Uh, and we've seen the goal earlier on. Uh, the final get which, what, 
There's the rules here. Well, there's a good talking point for the boys as Craig Gordon's come out. What's he doing? Long ball gets played through. Craig Gordon, absent without authorised leave. And I'll tell you what, that could have been nasty. Yeah, that's very fortunate. I don't think he has to come there at all. Um, you know, if he, he waits on his line, he's still got a lot to do with everybody coming back. And he's, uh, you know, to for him to score from there, um, it would be very difficult, Castellan. And, yeah, so he's actually made up Castellan's mind by coming rushing out there um, where he could put the ball. That was a, that was a big let-off for Hearts there. Terrific pass though by Ono, wasn't it? Spotted Again, it. yeah, was, that's the quality you get, players like that. Well, it's been a first half. Hearts have had few chances. Kevin McKenna has had the ball in the net. A bit's played out wide, little touch of Nielsen is there. And Robbie Nielsen. He's put his captain in trouble because I don't think Stephen Presley had much choice on that occasion. Until he goes down. That's why I call it a good foul. I think <laughs> if you get one, because I think at times he's away from her and you take a yellow card for that because he was, he was a chance to go bear down and go. And I think you take a, a booking for that one. Was that a David Beckham good foul? Well, yes, it could be that it happens in the game, but I think um, Stephen had to do that there. I think that's just yeah, a, a bit of experience. Absolutely right. No choice. First booking of the AFA Cup for the Hearts captain. Now Hearts claiming the ball was out, and it was, as Feyenoord make a rare mistake on the far side. Boschart, who came close after 20 minutes, is the ball cleared off the line by Andy Webster. Well, going back to the goal again, Hearts goal there. I, thought, I don't think Craig will be too, Craig Levine and Peter Houston will be too happy with that when they see it again. Uh, Paul Hartley was in offside position, but uh, he wasn't in a few more play at all. Ball gets played forward. I mean, the, this interfering with play thing, I'm sure the boys at half time will go into it in great detail. It's, it's not the most clear cut law that we have in the game. It's, it's uh, well, they'll be agreed because of the, the goal that they have lost through it. Uh, the, their player was definitely in an, an offside position uh, when Dirk Coyt at the back stick came in with the header. Now, he surely was interfering with play there. Well, the ball was going to that area, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. And that, that occasion there, um, it wasn't happening. Hearts have got a problem, and Graham Weir is going to come on. And I'm wondering, I'm looking around, it's Neil McFarlane who's been withdrawn. Injury or tactical? Well, he seems to be running off the pitch, okay. Um, maybe this is the, the time in the match that Craig says, right, we need to change it and have a go. Um, yeah, he's very he's going to do it. He's going to put two up front. He's went, he's matched up 4 4 2. That's good, that's, that's a good sign. He's positive, he obviously thinks he, he knows perhaps that they have got better players, but why not? Let's go 4 4 2 match up. Because they aren't getting out at all, Hearts, they're not, not getting out enough. Uh, it's very difficult to hit one man up front. And I think with respect, he's not a uh, defreeze, so. Uh, you know, with two up, young Weir up up front beside him, uh, Graham Weir, it will definitely help. So hard to have a free kick to defend. Four and a half minutes to the break, plus any stoppage time. Castellan has been a nuisance on the right side. Ball gets played back. I mean, the question for Paul Hartley, I mean, I mean, really, I mean, in the new language, the player is either active or inactive. I mean, there shouldn't be you know, a discrepancy between that. Yeah, and the true. judgments worked against Hearts yeah. both occasions. Aye, and I think I think uh, Paul Hartley was trying to come out out of the box yeah. anyway. He was coming away from play, and uh, you know how he was uh, deemed to be uh, uh, interfering with play. I don't know. Whereas the uh, you go back to the final goal again, I can't believe that because the guy is in a position where the header comes from. So surely he's, in, he's, he's interfering with play. Well, sometimes these things go with you, sometimes they don't. Craig Levine knows that they've not quite gone his way, but he's made his first change after 40 minutes. Let's see if Graham Weir can provide some support. And if he keeps getting balls played to him like that. Quite again, Danger Man looking for Kalu, headed away. Oh no, there's a little bit of time. Knock the ball back. Feyenoord start here at home against Arch, they then go to Ferns Varos. We've got Schalke at home as well. And we'll need to bow to round off our Group A opponents. We will progress, I think there's little doubt about that. It's a question of in which position does Hearts play the ball forward again. Can't get there, but the second ball breaks Hearts way. And Hartley. Didn't play very well, Graham Weir's offside. 
take him a couple of minutes just to get into the match. Yeah, it's difficult for a sub to come on again at the, the pace of the match. Um, we should have really look along the line there if he can. Uh, the big defender uh, side, he just stepped up. Good experience from him just to play him offside. Ball forward, sliding challenge. Hartley comes in there. Here comes Gibbs Norble. Back to Hartley again. Maybury. Back to Hartley. Is Hartley going to sit more now that Gibbs Norble's off? Um, yeah. well, is it a bigger part now that McFarlane's off? Yeah. You know, uh, is he going to sit slightly further back? Because he was the one that was trying to, you yeah. know, trying to support McKenna. Well, she was the one who tried to support, but I think at times that's the type of player he is, partly anyway. Uh, get, uh, trying to get forward, but he'd be a bit more disciplined role now, I would feel, yeah. um, with, 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 with the four across the middle now. Long throw from Robbie Nielsen. Dealt with well. Hoyt plays the ball back. Here's Kalu. Paul Hartley goes across, takes the touch. Could do well or not too, Paul Hartley. Sore one, and I think that could be blood from the nose. He'll take a, a chance and come right back on. I think he'll be fine. I'm sure he's had a few of them in his career. And he'll, <laughs> he'll have a lot more as well. Cyberlin holding off McAllister, but McAllister was illegal contact, trying to get near the ball. forward from Saidi. Actually desperately tries to win the ball. Bono has it again. On the deck, but Webster read it. Callister. He slipped on a few occasions. Jamie McAllister and again the shot tight passing. Causing Hart's problem. So that comes up to McKenna. Round it up. Went for the run. He's no more fooled everybody and himself. Feyenoord fans starting to be a little bit restless. Overall in the first half, Derek, your the thoughts? The first half, I think, 1-0. Uh, Krieger was slightly happy with that because it could have been a lot worse, of course. Uh, Dirk Coit had a, a chance that went wide, and uh, Castellan had won, with, and Craig Gordon can run out, but it could be 3-0. Having said that, we agreed at the goal, because the, the goal should have stood, I felt. Um, the finish was good, and it should have been a goal. Uh, but his organisation is good. Uh, Craig is, is always the Hearts team, the Hearts teams. But now I think it's great they're going positive, like 4 4 2, two up front, because they weren't getting out enough, in my opinion. They wouldn't get the ball. It was difficult to hit one guy up, uh, McKenna on his own up there. And with Graham Wheel on there, so that would help. Uh, a double, do double target, and you can go and try and get forward from there. Here come Hearts. Robbie Nielsen. Can Hearts make something happen? In the closing minute, ball played across. And they're out wide. Well, good news for Rangers. They are ahead by 1 to 0. Loving Crowns after 17 minutes, the Rangers ahead in Poland against the side second in the Polish League. We've got one minute of additional time to play here. That's Hearts who trail the home side by 1 to 0 in the city of Rotterdam. Best described as a bad architect's playground. Ball played out wide. Hearts can't go anywhere. Not my favourite place, you might have gathered that. Yeah, it's uh, a very industrial, as you say, without last night, haven't we? And, uh, it's in a few sites, Gregor and I, and a few of the boys. It was. Uh, Meeting a few Hearts fans, they're having a good time. Well, it was fun to be had in Rotterdam last night. Yes. Hearts fans hope there'll be some fun to be had in the next 45 minutes. And the second half gets underway. As we know, looks to come forward. Webster has to watch as Mabry gets sucked in there. And McAllister drops behind the fullback. Well, the halftime whistle goes. It's a story of two offside goals, one allowed for Feyenoord, one not allowed by Hearts. The goal scorer is quite scored after 21 minutes and the halftime scoreline from the De Coupe Stadium in Rotterdam. It's Feyenoord 1, Adam Midlothian 0. Oh, and he came across to me and said, what about that first goal? It was clearly offside. He Can couldn't it, believe it yeah, at all. Incredible, Paul Weaver. That's what we're discussing, the same as it has been. The studio there uh, was definitely offside. And I say that they'll be aggrieved, but they'll be, they'll be raging, in fact. Craig will be raging with that, because that's just, that's just on this level, you don't expect that. No. The referee, and it was poor. And at the same token, the other end was, again... Do you have credit terrible. to my Dutch colleague, you said, but the second one was worse, you know, yeah. shrugging the shoulders. It was. He can't believe it either. And it, so that there wasn't even a, a fine line of argument. I mean, it was conceded twice that... 
just as the boys said in the studio, too appalling decisions. Yeah, perhaps you get one in a, a game, but to, to have two is incredible. Uh, I think the, the Hearts goal should have stood. I'm sure that's the motivational speech that uh, Craig will be using at half time, saying you're not going to get any favours really here from the referee, so let's go and try and get the game back. And as, as John said in the studio, they went positive. He's not waited for the second half to do it. Um, and, and put uh, Graham Weir on, two up front, which is great. So let's go and have a go and then try and, and try and get back into the match. It's going to be very interesting speaking to Craig after the game because you'll have to pick his words carefully because you are hypersensitive about anything managers say against officials, but I'm sure he'll get the right words. Yeah, and I know that to my own cost on <laughs> Saturday <laughs> of the game uh, last Saturday, but uh, it is time. To, it's, you know, it's people's livelihoods at stake, and uh, you know, and, and bonuses and all, all, all sorts of things attached to this. And, and the points, obviously, uh, this it could be a, a, a crucial factor. But having said that, final would have been a better side uh, in terms of chances they've had. They could have been a few more ups. So they're a bit more fortunate to win the game. So ready for the second half. Here inside this impressive arena, the final fans have been a lot quieter than we expected them to be. As Patrick is normal and ever present, as is Webster and Maybury under the reign of Craig Levine in Europe is underway and here's another touch sliding challenge coming in and Chris Norbo plays the ball forward so Hart's looking for a change of fortune in the second half but they have to watch that man there Coit Kalu, he's fast too little bundle over, referee says play on he won't for the second one that was a definite free kick Kalu there, just getting a little bit impatient he's only 19, pushed over the defender I don't think he's got a case here, Castle. I think it was a foul, maybe. That was de a definite foul there, but the one before I thought was a foul. There's no surprise that uh, the Dutch are trying to get uh, Solomon Kalu Dutch citizenship. He's currently only a youth internationalist for the Ivory Coast, but they're hoping to convert him to become a Dutchman. And they see a bright future for him. Very much. He's a fantastic player, isn't he? 19 years old and uh, so mature uh, the, the way he plays. Um, he's been excellent. So a free kick will go the way of Feyenoord so Kevin McKenna just backs away played to the far side McAllister goes across one one forward Feyenoord again short passing game but they're disrupted that time nice touch by McKenna the ball forward, that's the advantage of Weir being forward, played the touch through the offside flag goes up but certainly the advantage of having the two men forward at that time, McKenna was comfortable in holding the ball, was able to play it forward and yeah. there was off I that was good play, that was decent um, a good line from the final back boys there uh, well disciplined and stepping out for the offside but uh, that was, that was better from Hearts that's, that's very positive Vamos Plays it forward, Kalu with a little flick on, Presley will allow it to run through to his goalkeeper, Craig Gordon, who had one mad moment in the first half. Came racing from his goal, but thankfully for Hearts, they got away with it on that occasion. Quite the goal scorer. McKenna tries to get the head flick on, Hamill's come running through that time. Again, it's just not no panic in the defence, that could easily just been thumped out the park, but again the ball was just laid down for the midfield player to come and pick up and that's what's impressive about Feyenoord they just don't want to waste the ball down. Uh, they're very good in possession aren't they, um, as you'd expect from a Dutch side um, technically they're excellent their movement's brilliant as well at times you, play, you get different players bombing forward and sitting in different positions uh, and they're very comfortable on the ball, as you'd expect Shot again, plays it forward. Webster, the ball away. And a little bit more pressure on the back four. What Hearts can do, but Presley has to come across. Time the tackle well on Kalu. Very solid from Stephen Presley's 13th European tie. His manager played in 15, and Henry Smith holds the record with 22. Again, the pressure there by Hearts. A nice, lively start by Hearts. Yeah, I think they started well. I think Craig will be happy with that. Uh, see, the big difference now is with the two up front, isn't it? And McKenna and Beer up front, because it wasn't happening from the first half. They couldn't get up the park at all, and they would end up sitting in most of uh, the first half. But this is better. 
Here comes Hamill. Just wanted too long because Norbo slides in. A few challenges going in because Norbo tries to battle for it. Quite, that was lovely. Great skill. And he's applauded. Here's Mark Poor. Not seen too much from him in the match. Almost a 1 2. Was well read by the Hearts defence. We have lovely touch. McKenna. Is Norbo sad? Oh no, read that. And you've got Patrick is Norbo. He's up and okay. So the Feyenoord Legion, or Hit Legion as they're known, start to sing behind Craig Gordon's goal, trying to encourage their side. But Hearts have made the brightest start to the second half. Which is almost five minutes old. Sandy Webster sees the ball out of play. I was wondering, Derek, because the four in midfield, it doesn't seem to... Hearts had the five, obviously, for 40 minutes. The four's now in there. I don't think they've been... You know, really too affected by that so far. I mean, I was expecting perhaps Ono to come more into the game and play more passes or Bosch. Yeah, I think uh, Hearts are com competing very well against them at the moment in there. Uh, they've got a good aggression with Chris Norbo and, and, and Paul Hartley. Very busy as always, and uh, they're coping okay. There's Bosch. And Weir puts from pressure on, he gets the ball, but the flag goes up, and Weir just thumps the ball away in frustration. And Weir felt he may have won that ball cleanly. But the referee and the system disagree. Yeah, that, I think that was right. I think it was a foul, but I think he's done the right thing. You try to put him under pressure, and that hit the, guy, the guys behind you seeing that, you know, it pushes them forward and try and get, get further up the park, uh, which they're trying to do at the moment. He's only 20, but he's got a great deal of experience. He actually played, uh, I'm sure it was his debut at Pataudry a few years ago. He was only a young, young 17 year old at the time, and he gets sent off. That's right, yeah. well, he's uh, been better since then. Nothing to do with me, I might add, but uh, he gets sent off in that match. Okay, we're the Harps here, of course, with a couple of goals against Hibs. Wrote them in for the Harps history books. Harps yeah. came back from 4 2 down. The Harps fans turn to start to cheer. Kalush coming forward because Norbo's behind him. Kalush has good pace, good touch. Sliding challenge came in from Webster. Clean as a whistle. And Hartley. Trying to play it away, bad break for Hearts. Coit looks up, he's got four men forward. Pass forward, intercepted. Again, Hearts will hard to get rid of it. Oh, nicely done. That's good play. From Weir. There's Joe Hamill as well involved. Hearts are playing better. And it's probably about the first time they've really forced the ball back to the goalkeeper. Yeah, that's a good sign, getting pressed up high on the pitch. See Joseph Hamill there, uh, yeah. does everything great. And he's um, looking over to the far side to watch Craig Levine's reaction there when he gave the ball away <laughs> so cheaply. <laughs> he was pulling his hair out. Especially when you've done the good bit first. Here comes Robbie Nielsen. More options for him with the cross. Saidi though came across. Is in. It's a cosmopolitan side here in Rotterdam that Hearts are facing. Special looking for McKenna, that comes through, there's a chance here. And Graham Weir went through, he felt he was being tugged. It's an interesting one. And Graham Weir doesn't really make too much of a fuss in the end, his initial reaction. He was trying to see if he could influence the referee. I think you can always tell by the reaction of the player there, Paul, that... Uh, yeah, I think he knew it wasn't a penalty kick. Uh, he went for it right enough, but, uh, yeah. you know, the, we went for some crazy referees and decisions tonight, so we might have got it, but uh, uh, it wasn't a penalty kick. That's a hard challenge on the far side from Alan Maybrain. He's had a few hard challenges. Uh, he's a tough wee player, Alan. He's got to be careful. Um, Alan Maybrain. And he scores the stretcher to come on. And uh, Patrick Paul was none too impressed. Well, if you'd like to talk about the penalty, yeah, Derek. Go. Yeah. Sure I think, uh, I think uh, Graham Weir's got a hold of his jersey. I don't think that can be given there. Both are in a wee grab at each other. Uh, 
he's got a hold of his jersey as well. I'm not sure if that that had the penalty kick. Six and one, half a dozen yeah. of the other, perhaps. There's Graham Weir, Castle. He's played well, but will he be Derek White's man of the match? The prize is a digital radio. Call us on 090-11-110-861. If you can agree with Derek's selection, and I can tell you that he's not sure yet. McAllister just steps over the ball, wins it. Who comes to try and close him down? Long ball forward, drifted out of play. The hearts have certainly looked brighter since Craig Levine has changed it. I don't really see the need for any more changes at this stage, although the bench is a little bit small in terms of European experience. Uh, obviously, you get Michael Stewart on the bench. Um, but I must say, I haven't seen a lot of play. He's, he's got uh, you know, some experience from Manchester United. Uh, Dennis, Dennis Wines as well, as I, as I know from my time at Aberdeen. And, a fantastic finish on the goal score. Maybe not scoring as many goals as Arsenal does at Inverness, but uh, another one could come on. Well played forward. Just some signs that Feyenoord, the passing, just not quite going where they want it to go. No, it just shows you even players like that can be careless on the ball. And I'm sure Hill won't be happy because they are better than that. Um, Craig Levine sees his side trailing by 1 to 0. The Hearts are still very much in this match. And they're trying to go after it. That's really the first example of a sort of long, high thump away we've seen from Ono. He's always wanted to try and bring the ball down and play. He has been excellent in possession, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, probably one of the better known Japanese players. And his touch and the that's what I like about him. A midfield player very rarely gives a ball away. It's one of his popular football strips in Japan is the final number eight, Ono. It's hard to take the long throw, looking for Weir, and he can't get there. A little bit ambitious, but the Hearts fans only a few things to start thinking about. I'm quite sure why Tony felt the need to try and put his hand around Graham Weir. He's a fiery character, Graham Weir, isn't he? And yeah. uh, at the moment, the rest of them love him. Um, that was on Calder for Syed, you can understand his first. Uh, yeah, I mean, the push was unnecessary. Uh -huh. yeah. that, that was too. All that was missing was a couple of handbags and <laughs> could have got on with it, really. But Graham Weir certainly proved a handful so far. A flick on, onto McKenna. Looking for Weir, who stepped away. Never Babos. One ball forward, Nielsen with the header. Oh no, again, brings it down, flicks it wide. That's more like the owner we've seen in the first half. I don't think Feyenoord, Paul, are, are as fluent as uh, they were uh, in the first half. I think that the Hearts have done a good job on them, putting them under pressure, uh, putting a high tempo, and uh, you know, as a result, they're putting them under pressure and they're, they're giving the ball away quite a bit as well. I mean, Rufio, look, would he be, I mean, what he might be too strong a phrase, but would he be bothered at this stage? I think he would obviously want his team to pass the ball better than they have been doing. A bit of pushing and pulling going on the far side. Oh, no. Having a little battle with McAllister. Hart's trying to come forward down the left. And you can see just at the very top of your picture there, Craig Levine is arguing with the assistant as the ball gets played through the middle. Nicely done! And wonderfully finished by Barker. He's hardly been in the game, the Belgian. But what a difference he's just made. And Hearts have got problems in final. It was a great through ball, and uh, you can just see we always experience 57 caps for Belgium, this guy here, and uh, that's a, a fantastic finish. Still, we lift over the keeper, plenty of composure, used all his experience there. That's a great finish. At a time when you, I didn't have to thought they were under any pressure or any, having any really, any problems, um, but that just shows you the quality of the team they're playing against. That's a sore one for the Hearts to take. They had been playing well, playing weird. Well had changed things, they were starting to get possession, we were wondering and worried about the Feyenoord midfield, and he one pass through the middle, yeah, and so he was in. That's the quality sh shining right through, isn't it? You know, maybe saying they're not as fluent as, as a, they were in the first half, but it's a wee bit of quality ball through the middle, and Hoare just shows all his, 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 his experience and his composure to finish off a, uh, a, a great wee chip over the goalkeeper. But Hearts have failed to score in six of the 12 matches this season, they need a goal. Back into this match. This final order of taking control. 
speaking to a few fans last night and uh, the Hearts fans, and their expectations weren't too high either, Paul, uh, which is understandable. Uh, they were out to have a good time, obviously, but their expectations weren't too high because you've got to remember this is a real quality side, you know, they're, I think they're uh, top of the, the, near, the top of their division uh, in, in Holland. Alan maybe has to be careful, he got suckered in there. Ball gets played forward, that's a dreadful pass, and Hearts have to be thankful for that. They did have men back, but again, the movement was quick. I'm wondering if there's a suspicion of offside. But Feyenoord, just like they did after the opening goal, have got that little spell, and here they come again. It's a good challenge from Castellan. Anybody goes down, doesn't get the free kick. And he plays the ball back inside to Andy Webster. Goodly done out of defence from Hart. Paul Hartley back inside the box. Long one forward. We are trying to race away. We are getting away from his man. He needs some support. He holds up. He's got it. The shape of Joe Hamill. Hamill thought about the shot. Still thinks about the shot. Good effort from Hamill. He looked initially to his left hand side, Derek, to see if support support arrived it hadn't so he went for it yeah had to go for it there decent technique on the ball but there's never going to beat the keeper for that there's not enough pace in the ball he hits target this is a comfortable save for Barbos well, there's not had too much to do so far for Barbos to pick up his win bonus Marshall want to continue trying to impress they know that Schalke will have a scout at least here they will entertain them in Murray Field in the next match Safety first, plays it away. So that's a shock at home and ball away, and then Finnish Varos at home to round off the campaign. The half time score is Schalke 1, ball 0. So the Germans ahead. That's a good battling performance there by Hamill. On to Nielsen, he'll try and take a touch, go into the box, he's very right footed. Pulls it across, McKenna's onside! Well, why Kevin McKenna didn't pull that down? I don't know. What an opportunity that was. I just thought it was just one. You bring it down your chest and volley. Yep. And uh, you try to get across back goal across the goal again. Well, that was a fantastic, that's probably one of the best chances of the match. That was incredible. I just couldn't believe the ball coming back out. The way. Played through. Again, the flag stays down. I mean, he obviously plays in defence more often, but he's got 20 goals for Hearts and 123 appearances. That's a pretty good strength. Yeah, he's got a great touch for a big lad as well. That's why Craig uses him up there uh, at times. But uh, that was an opportunity and a half to, to bring it down and hit it in the volley. And Joe Hamill and Graham Weir certainly trying to make an impact on this match. Two in picture now. away by Basto. McKenna goes for it. As we are forward, we're on to Hamill. Paul Hartley. Four goals for Hearts this season, including one against Braga. And Robbie Nielsen has the power to throw. Hearts are just a little bit more pressure, but be aware of the speed and pace. It's far north side. That's an interesting ball back by Alan Maverick. Absolutely dealt with by Craig Gordon. Yeah, well done, Craig Gordon. That was yeah. excellent for the goalkeeper there. Could easily just slashed it or, you know, just hit the ball at the part there. That was great composure. And he also looked at the forwards and say that that wasn't hard. Final are preparing a change on the far side. Normally for international matches, the dugouts are on the side we're on. For UEFA Cup and domestic games, they're on the far side. Don't ask me why. So Babos. And Maybury, which is well as Castellan tried to win it from him. Callister will put some pressure on Maybury. It'll be interesting to see what Rudhulik does here, whether he changes his system or it's just a straight personnel change, it's Bruno Basto, the left back, he was signed by Rude Hullet, because it was a problem position over the last few years for Feyenoord, they've tried a few players there, and the change is going to be made, it's the Nigerian, Dean, Patrick, the Fuga from the song, 
He was born in Denmark, his parents Nigerian. Yeah, the moment just looks like a straight throw, doesn't it? Just a left back for a left back. Yeah. Ball gets played forward. Touch back on. And there's a surprise choice at right full back. No song available. Gally could have played there. And Gahan could have played there too. It's knocked away. Nice and touch by McAllister. Gianni's over on the, the right back. It stepped in there. It's a 17 year old. He doesn't look out of place at all. He was very comfortable on the ball and showed good composure tonight. And he's played well. Andy Webster. That's if they could pull a goal back. Who's rattled fine art. The third goal. The field will be too much for Hearts. Robbie Nielsen tries to cover for his captain. Pelou has it. Expectation around the stadium. That's a good tackle. For all the fans in front of us, Rose. But where was to be denied? Yeah, that's the problem you get. You get a wee bit ragged when you're trying to get yourself back into the game, they're pushing forward, Hearts trying to get a goal, and it can become exposed at the back at times, and that was uh, the case there. Elijah well, comes forward, throws the ball back to Ono, he's trying to cut the left foot shots, here's one on the right foot, curling one, easy one, for the goalkeeper to take. So ono played in two World Cups, 98 as a sub, as we said earlier, all of the matches for Japan in 2002. Or preparing a second change as McKenna went forward. Well, McKenna is in sense, looked like us there was a pull, but it was on the referee's blind side. And I can understand why the referee didn't see it. But he wasn't happy, Kevin McKenna. Here it is. I can see he's clearly got a hold of him there. You can see why he's in sense. That's incredible. Hold on, he's trying to go out with him, I think. Kalu, I mean, it's been a privilege to watch. On Kalu this evening. He's been tremendous. He's had a couple of great flicks. He does look a, a real player. Yeah, I think he's going to be a star. Uh, he's a star at the moment, a, a, a major star in, in years to come. Uh, he's only 19 years old, which is quite incredible. Uh, plays well, such a maturity about him, and uh, I'm glad to see him play. He, he was excellent. Is he a target for Thistle? I don't know if our budget was stretched that far. I'll have it with Alan Dick and the chairman and go back. He's certainly the sort of player that you can imagine. You know, your Inter Milan, your AC Milan, your Valencia's would all be keeping tabs on. I'm very much so. I think um, final or a club would probably um, take any kind of big money uh, for the. Hearts trying to come forward again. Played away by the fullback. So some space for Hearts to try and exploit. Lovely touch by Hamill. Nielsen read it. So too. Played away. Nielsen tries to go up. Ball breaks for Hamill. Chance here for Hearts. There's four men forward. McKenna. Got the shout across. Tried to play it away. He wants the free kick again. It's been knocked away. Final two Hearts nil. Goals at each half so far. A problem. The men from Tynecastle. Paul Hartley tries to come to meet him. Coit again, a little touch in. Ah, it's nicely picked up by Buffalo. The flag's up on the far side. And it's the Feyenoord fans' turn to be unhappy with the ends, Larson. And as I said, they're getting a wee bit ragged at the moment, Hearts, and they're, they're getting opportunities in all the time. Incredible. She got that one wrong as well. Yep. <laughs> well, when is he going to get wrong tonight? He's consistent. Uh, consistently wrong, I know. Uh, I hate giving officials a hard time, Derek, but I mean, it, you know, it's. I, d I think some of the stuff's been unforgivable here from a heart so point a of view. Game tonight. Ball gets played forward, Graham. We are looking for any scraps that may have come his way. Ball gets played across. Presley's challenge on Coit. Riffle. He's playing. And that forward roll vacated by Kalu. Now Ono. Oh he's got options on the right. Everland to Bosch out. And the shot comes in. And that goes well wide. Well, plenty of action at the weekend in the SPL and on Saturday at 4.30. Join us for sports scene results. 
all the information that you need to know about the SPL and Scottish football 4.30 on Saturday. It's just great that, you know, Ruto like the kid has got the luxury of, uh, you know, he brings off Kalou and he brings on Buffo, who's a, a Belgian international, you know, 14 It's just that it's fantastic he can do that, you know, the, the squad to do that and change things around. Um, unfortunately, Craig Levine, with respect to the, the guys who got on the bench, they have that, that, that same problem, um, have that opportunity to do that. I mean, Craig Levine's got three players that have not played in European football, and then Michael Stewart, who would also make his hearts debut in European football on the bench. Yep. Dennis Wyness may well be an option. As Feyenoord looks to come forward, trying for a third goal. Touched by Hart. Hartley has it. Looks to come forward. Nielsen's making the overlap. Hartley though, tries to judge it right. It's an easy one. The fullback to go across and defend. Point. Touch is excellent, and then the vision as well. Oh, the pass might have not been the best, but he certainly saw what he wanted to do. Yes, that was that was good, wasn't it? It was uh, the, the vision to see him to put over the top there. So Hart's preparing their second change on the far side as ball comes forward. McKenna tried the head flick on for Weir, and Hart's just needed a little something to happen to try and get the supporters back into this and just lift it a little. They do. They're bringing Dennis Wyness on. I don't know what they're going to bring on. Are they going to put? Three up front, go for it. They've lost the game, but the game's out, out of their, their, their hands now. So do they, do, they, do they gamble and really go for it? Um, well, the answer yeah. is Jamie McAllister will come off, and Dennis Wyness will come on. It could be three up front. It'd be a danger, but it would be a danger. But the game's lost. I think they're going to go. Uh, they have McKenna's just going the right hand side in the middle of the park. 4-4-2, tried with Dennis up with Graham Weir, just to try and change it, because the game's lost at the moment for them, and they try anything to try and get back in the game. Certainly not an acceptance by Craig Levine that his side can't get back into this match, so he's trying to be positive in the change. I, I think, uh, again, as I said earlier, you've got to remember the quality of the, t the team they're playing against. They're fantastic, you know, internationals and uh, a lot of top players there, and uh, I don't think there's any disgrace to go losing 2-0 to a team of this quality. The only thing that's disappointed me so far is the atmosphere. As Wynas tries to bring the ball down. A deflected ball across. Hearts of players in the box. Comes to the outside. Alan Mabry. Four goals in 121 matches for Hearts. Alan Mabry. But didn't test the goalkeeper. No, I just wouldn't drop down from right would it there. It was um, trying to go over the top of it. Uh, so it's a difficult technique in, in itself, but the ball just wouldn't drop from. Going back to the crowd, you were saying uh, that's a, a major disappointment for me tonight as well. I thought the great stadium uh, at the start of the match mar marvellous atmosphere and uh, it just went very quiet and uh, the team were winning 2-0 at home in Europe I thought they'd be a bit more boisterous and singing a bit more but the Hearts fans are the ones that are making all the noise well, we'd it. Well, this will be a job well done with 18 minutes to go he's side ahead and in little danger so far 2,500 Hearts fans off to our right in the Marathon Stadium stand. Trying to make some noise, but they want some encouragement too. Here comes Robbie Nielsen. Nielsen plays the ball through, looking for Wyness. Four European appearances for Hearts, no European goals. In fact, the last two Hearts players to score in Europe, away from home, with the exception of Mark de Vries, who scored on the last couple of occasions, Darren Jackson and Scott Settler. Back Darren, in Iceland. Darren, aye. A few years ago, that as well. I thought you just looked surprised at Darren Jackson. Darren. Scored, eh? <laughs> it's a good goal, too. Yeah. Lagans of Olive Stadium. And Ricky Vick. The Hartsmans singing the European song. As the ball gets played forward, that was almost a decent one. That's claiming that should go their way. It's not going to, can claim all they like. It's like to see Dennis Wyness get a little half chance. Yeah, it's a great finisher, Dennis. I haven't worked with him before, and uh, if he gets the opportunity, he'll put it away. Just hope he gets the opportunity to do it. And uh, they do need a, some kind of spark in the game or some kind of lift because it just went really flat now, hasn't it? Uh, the game is, uh, seems to be won for final. But oh, Hearts has a wee opportunity, and I hope they get it. Their actual, uh, I think the, the Hearts fans have been a credit to the club tonight. They, they, Made, uh, enjoying herself, um, singing the hearts all night, and 
I think in a way they're trying to go the other team on to get the final supporters singing because they've been very quiet. Well, mind you, you don't want to go with the final supporters. They've got the best of reputations around these parts. Mind you, Den Haag have been getting all the headlines here in Holland. They had problems against PSV at the weekend. And the Dutch FA will look after that. Den Haag were already going to have their ground closed for two matches. And some reckon it could be a ban of up to 10 games. Certainly, Fire would expect when they go there in December to be playing behind closed doors. Yeah, there's just nothing. Yeah, that's not acceptable in football. Any walker life, that type of behaviour. And uh, we hope there's none of that going to happen tonight or in any other games in the future here. Well, credit to the Dutch FA for the action they're taking. That's quite pushy as Robbie Nielsen. The referee spots it. They've been hard not to. And quite goes back. He's looking to lead Feyenoord this season to the first league title since 1999. Championship dominated by PSV and Ajax. It's the annoyance of the Feyenoord fans. It's nine years since they last won the Dutch Cup. But their last success was in 2002 here in Rotterdam in the UEFA Cup. A little warning there for the Tunisian Saidi. There's McKenna. Continues. He's lasted well, Kevin McKenna, given the fact that he's been out for so long as Hartley drives the ball in. McKenna was the target man, gets a little back header on it, but easy for the goalkeeper. And as time ticks, and ticks away, it gets harder and harder to see how Hearts get back into this one. Buffel plays it infield. Nice touch by Ono. Oh, he's made a terrific move, brought it down brilliantly! Oh, sensational football from Feyenoord. Well, he applauds the quality of the pass, but look at the quality of the taking shot. That is just top drawer, isn't it? His first touch is incredible. Craig Gordon pulls off a marvellous save, I know that, but that is just... That's what you pay your entrance money for that alone, just to see that. The technique and everything, any young kids watching that, that's the way to go over the top of the ball. His first touch was superb, sets us up for a fantastic shot. Well, if we gave Craig Gordon a hard time in the first half for coming out, equal amount of praise on Craig Gordon. That was a simple, wonderful save. One-handed. Great stuff from Hart's goalkeeper. Keeps it at 2-0. It's fine. Or come forward. Hart's will shepherd that ball out of play. And I get the feeling that the final fans would like to see more skill like that. And I think they appreciate that, didn't they? Oh. Um, that brought them up a wee bit there. So, <laughs> good job. McLean, Greg Levine, Peter Houston, have a little chat. It is real quality that Hearts are up against. And again, if Hearts can get a goal, they would put pressure on the home side. McKenna, little back flick. And this is looking for it. Hamill comes in! Well, the right smile says it all from Joe Hamill. He knew he had a real chance there. It's come from the danger of throwing with Nielsen. Pr pretty straightforward stuff. A uh, flick on from a header. And I, was hit, when I, hit, I thought I was going to hit the back of the net. Just dropped nicely for him as well. And I think you've got to hit target for I think Joe will agree. And that one, he should have hit the target. Even put it across the goal uh, and make the keeper save the thing. Um, the shot um, should have done, done better there. Again, it's a sign of what Craig Levine told us. He reckoned that the back four were vulnerable in certain situations and the couple of chances that Hearts have had have sprung from errors. Yeah, very much so. I think overall I don't think they've asked enough questions of the back guys yet of the, the final back line. Um, I'd like to ask them a few more questions on um, But again, I keep going back to the, the amount of quality they have in the team and they're, they're a very good team. Well, Hartley got stopped in his tracks there. Hearts have to take the free kick, driven forward. Get it on by Poor. And then touched on to the substitute, Buffel. Buffel coming forward. And to take on Webster, goes outside him. That was a terrific challenge by Robbie Nielsen. And if the goalkeeper had picked it up, I'm not so sure anything would have been awarded against him because it was a tackle, not a pass back. But he read it well. Yeah, it's been the last uh, a few great tackles this evening. Uh, Robbie Nielsen's had a few great tackles in the game. Well, Patrick is normal, not happy with the attention that he just received from Borshaw. Coit goes in there as well. Marshall is yellow carded. It was a needless one. Not quite sure what Pascal Marshall was up to there. 
it's a late tackle. Alan Mabry got the yellow card there as well. Um, must have been something he said to the referee. Um, just in sense with the tackle because I thought it was horrendous. It was a late tackle. And, uh, but because Noble read it well and uh, managed to lift his foot off the ground at the time just to make it a nasty one. Alan Mabry yellow carded. Stephen Presley, Andy Webster. Oh, I've got yellow cards in this competition as well. It's played forward. Little flick on. Played away, and this is where the space going to open up for Feyenoord. Felt seems that quite has pulled away from him. Leader plays it forwards. Not the best ball in the end, but uh, tell you what, he's impressed on the spoofle. Yeah, obviously he's an international player, so he's going to be a bit quality there. And uh, he's, he's come on and did well. A nice way you can swap uh, Salou and bring him on. Kalu, sorry. So ten minutes to go. The coup and Castellan is withdrawn. A smile on the face on the far side and some applause. So thank you. Kasovic comes on. Serbo and Montenegrin. Internationalist. Take an ankle knock. That's probably why he wasn't in the starting eleven. Fesley there holding off his man illegally, says the referee. Stephen Presley was not at it easy tonight, just holding on over the arm. And an easy decision for the referee. Webster watches. Goes all the way through to Craig Gordon. I wonder if Craig Gordon's going to. Yeah, we're just going route one. And it comes in from the right side of midfield to flick it on. And then just runs all the way through. And again, the Feyenoord fans are very quiet around the stadium. They're expected to beat Hearts, that was clear. And they lead by 2 to 0. Feyenoord tries to go in there with Weir. It's back to Barbos. Offside flag goes up. Oh, you're going to hear an awful lot more about that man, Dirk Coit. He's got 51 goals in his Utrecht career. Utrecht I mean, were a club that were in financial trouble. And got raided by Feyenoord. As Patrick Kisnorval is withdrawn and Hearts make the third and final change. And Michael Stewart introduced to the action. Edinburgh board now on the stage here in the coupe. What influence will he have? McKenna plays it forward. Hartley tries to go in behind his man. Hartley's still there. Goalkeeper comes out under pressure from Hartley. He does the job. And just takes the ball for a walk. He's got very little time to do anything. Michael Stewart in the game. It's interesting. It's the first time I'm going to actually see him play in the flesh. And uh, I'd like to see him play a wee bit longer, to be honest. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Um, but I've never actually seen him play. That goes out wide on the far side. A sweet passer of the ball, Michael Stewart. Found it particularly easy to settle in here with Hearts. Or Sharp. Oh, he's got the shortest trip of all the players home. He lives about 100 metres from the stadium, I was told. So commuting not high on his list. As that's kept in well by her. Second goal scorer. Plays the angle ball and Coit is there! Webster was beaten by the cross and Dirk Coyd helps himself to his second goal evening. The third for Feyenoord, the lights go out on Hearts. It's Feyenoord three, Hearts nil. Fantastic delivery, just pulls on the shoulder of the centre back there. Again, just great awareness from him. Just a, he's, a, he's a top player, isn't he? Just, yeah. His finish is fantastic there. Just guides it into the net. He knows where really the goal is, obviously. Uh, he's a top player. Who's at fault here, the defender or the goalkeeper? No, I think they, I think it's maybe too much for the keeper to come there. Uh, it's maybe too far out. It's one of the balls that's in the danger area, isn't it? The, the area that is, you know, the, the keepers don't want to come for. It's in between the centre backs and the goalkeeper. And the delivery was fantastic from Hoover. And uh, again, Koita just uh, finishes it off nicely. 
Uh, two goals for him. The ball gets played back. Derek, man of the match, thoughts this evening? Well, de definitely uh, Derek Kouita there has just scored the goal. Um, I think overall, two reasons for his, his goals, obviously. Um, but that, the touch he had there later on from the cross field pass, his touch and shot, like Craig Gordon made a magnificent save from. I just think uh, the technique there was just wonderful. And he's been a joy to watch tonight. Heard a lot about him and read all the reports about him today, this morning. There things in the newspaper about him, the local papers here. And uh, he's definitely a top player. Well, it's not his job for Rude Hulick tonight. Ah! He knows a good player when he sees one. He knows he's got several on this pitch tonight. Hearts now looking for a goal that would simply provide some consolation. And the fact that one of the number I could claim to have scored on such a wonderful stage. Ball comes out to this near side. It's the first time Hearts have played Dutch opposition. It's going to end in disappointment. It's a lovely one too. Then the ball gets played through. The offside flag goes up. I'll tell you what, I don't think Masovic was offside. I don't think he was the one that was offside, but that's how we look at it again. Yeah, it was slightly off there. Yeah. Uh, just the no more coming forward. It was Buffel who was trying to come forward, he was active. So Rangers have scored for a second time. Nachanova, who scored away in Moscow, makes it a meter Ronke. Nil Rangers 2, adding to the Peter Lovenkrantz goal. So Rangers look like they'll be okay in Poland as Nielsen tried to come forward he did fell one of his opponents that looked accidental as Stewart tries to get involved and the ball will go out of play and the referee will allow some treatment and it's Patrick Pauwa who is down I think we'll see him up quite quickly here I that that's what is it really it's been dead. But there we go it's fine didn't really appear to be too much in this wasn't it uh, very very dramatic and a slight bang in the face but I mean So some applause as he gets back to his feet. Now Robbie Nielsen will look to get the throw on the box. Michael Stewart fighting for the ball. Lizzie's out oh, to boof out. And a heavy sliding challenge. Holt's progress. And the three still leaves Andy Webster to move away. Stuart first of all, Webster then going in. And ball forward, Coit was looking for that one. He wasn't going to get it. No, just good experience from Stephen Presley. He's just held him off, just body strength. I don't think there's any foul at all there. Gordon going for the long ball out wide. Anybody takes the touch. What will Craig Levine and Hearts have learned from tonight, Derek? I think they've seen a... a, a Top's quality side in operation here in terms of keep possession, choice of passes, movement, a lot of pace in the side. And uh, see, it's no disgrace to lose to a team of this quality. I think they knew that if they won massive uh, game against them uh, final tonight, but to lose your probably your top two players in your side, uh, Stamp and, uh, and the Freese especially, um, is a huge blow. And it's difficult enough to try to beat them with the two guys in the team, but the two missing is. It was always going to be a, a, a major task for him tonight. Hearts have a free kick. The man of the match winner. Congratulations to Mark Henry from Greenock, who correctly identified that point as the man of the match as chosen by Derek White. Congratulations to you, Mark. You win the digital radio. Is there a goal in this match for Hearts? Two minutes to go. Oh, Hart over the free kick. Played in. Hockever well, Babos just nonchalantly watches the ball hit the roof of the net. Rude Hullet knows his side have got off to the best possible start. Although their trip to Ferenc Varus could be an interesting one next time round. I think it was a difficult group in, in itself, and he said just in his press conference he didn't feel there was any weaknesses. Um, I think I was just giving some respect to Hearts for we saying that, um, which is great. And I think uh, he's got an extremely good side, and I think he'll be quietly confident that his side will progress through. Schalke were leading at half time there, the next visitors for Hearts at Murrayfield. Ball forward, free kick. And the referee just saying, come on, bring the ball back. A 
that looked a little harsh. An unusual booking there, wasn't it, yeah. to say the least. Well, I think he might feel a little bit hard done by the substitute. Patrick Collegia seemed to knock the ball away. I don't think he heard what the referee's whistle, so I think he can feel a little bit hard done by. Starts play the free kick into the box. Hit up by Coit. And he scored two goals. He's side with 3-0 up. He's the forward, yet he's coming back, sticking to the assignment that he's been given. The hearts get past him on that occasion. It's impressive from the Dutchman. At this stage of the game, easy for the forward just say, oh, I'm just going to stay up front. No, I think that's, that's when you show that that's a, when he's a top team player. You know, he's obviously got his individual skills and he's a goal scorer uh, and a top player. But that's what that's what's great about him as well. He sees a team player, he's back there defending. Wants to keep the team a clean sheet. I mean, we've mentioned it's a quality side Hearts have played. I mean, overall, how would you rate the Hearts' performance? I think um, they've been... In, extremely unfortunate that, uh, in the first half they shouldn't have the, the, the goal the first goal they could have been so different if that had happened uh, they should have the goal themselves incredible how football can be cruelty at times like that but uh, i don't think they've done too bad i think as, as usual they've been organized and uh, but i don't think it's any disgrace i said earlier to lose to team this quarter hearts they're going to get something on the scoreboard mckenna brings it down the header away but again it's the goalkeeper who comes across to take it there'll be three minutes of additional time well, from the first meeting with Scottish opposition in 1970 when they beat Celtic in the European Cup final. Final art have never failed to progress in European competition against Scottish opposition. St. Lynn back in 83, Aberdeen in 87, although they required away goals to do it. And of course they beat Rangers in the UEFA Cup. Just a couple of years ago, en route to winning it. Stuart. Can't get in there, Hartley with a sliding challenge. Nielsen looking for it. Put it to Buffel. Goes an international, holds the ball up. Again, looks to see who's available. Boshart. Hart's made the challenge. Now Kevin McKenna comes forward. Poor. Comes across. He's been busy tonight. The ball gets played back. Hearts will learn from this European experience. It's a very good team. And that's caught there, Presley, on Coit. And in terms of European standard, Derek, in your opinion, I mean, we expect Feyenoord to go through the group. How good are they overall? Well, what I've seen tonight, they're very impressive, um, especially the uh, Coit and Kalu up front. Yeah, and they too, they've got a, a duo who are fantastic ability and, can, and if you can get goals from guys like that then you've always got a chance defensively as Craig said maybe they're a, uh, a little bit weak uh, at the back guys you think but they haven't been tested enough in my opinion uh, that's some testing enough tonight so maybe you can make a judgment on that when they're tested a bit against better opposition not giving up they're still trying to come forward we're inside the final minute and a few fans have left the ground as we are has the ball holds up Take the throw. Michael Stewart's made the run. But really, the third goal was the killer goal. Quite second. Beautifully finished after 83 minutes. And that's Bamos plays the ball away. Hartley. Hamill had a good effort, almost through to Weir. I like they've taken that down and gone in on the goalkeeper. There's just a few seconds left. Comes to Michael Stewart. Getting the hearts going there. Right on this near side. Well, the referee says enough is enough, and Hearts adventure in the Dukup Stadium ends in disappointment. The dodgy decisions came in the first half, but in the end, Hearts are slung away by the two goals by Coit and the additional goal by Hoor. It finished here in the Dukup Stadium in Rotterdam. Final three, Hearts nil.